Well, hi there, everybody. This is Mr. Brzezat. Today, what we're going to do is look into color theory a little bit deeper into what's called complementary colors. Now, we looked at complementary colors as simply a definition in the last episode, but today what we're going to do is we're going to look at how they are used and why they are used. And to be honest, out of all the different color types, this is the most important using the methods that I go over in this class. If you're going to figure out what a shadow is going to be in a color image, you need to know what the complement is because that's how you get it. So quick review, there are three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Those cannot be broken down into any further colors at all. Uh, the others are called secondaries, and those are purple, orange, and green. You need to combine primaries to get those. Uh, and then finally, there are what are called tertiary colors, or I call them in-betweens. Those are the ones between uh, the primaries and the secondaries on the wheel. For example, between yellow and green, we have yellow, green. That is a tertiary color. Now what a complement is, a complementary color, is a color that goes hand in hand with another one. Uh, on the color wheel, that is a color that is directly opposite of another. For example, the complement to green is red. The complement to reddish violet is yellowish green. So that is basically how you find out what a complement is. Just look to the other side of the color wheel for it. Now why do you use complements? Well, you use them to shade. You use them to create realistic looking shadow colors. Uh, what happens when you combine the two is that the two colors neutralize each other. They don't resemble either of the colors originally. It creates a muddy, kind of a pukey, brownish, grayish type color. It kind of neutralizes it into its own natural shade looking color. So this is an example of why you would ever use complementary colors. This is a technique that I call complementary shading. Complementary shading is when you add shadow using a complementary color. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, here's an example at the top. This is everything that you know to do right now. This is a flower petal being shaded to a light source. You know how to determine where a shadow is going to be. You know how to apply pressure. And you also know how to layer. Those are things that you must do with the techniques that we're going to learn coming up here with colored pencil. So to do a complementary shadow, what you do is in the dark places, mainly the pressure three areas, you go and find the complement to that color. You then apply different pressures. You layer another layer of that complement over the top, and the two colors mix, and they neutralize and create a realistic looking shadow. That's how you add detail at the end of the piece. As you can see, there's all these cool ripples and folds, and that's using complementary shading. But there are flaws in it. You can notice that in this picture, you can still see some areas of green. That's where the colors did not mix. Anywhere where there's no base color, your complement stands on its own. You want to apply complementary colors only where a base is at. That's a big rule of thumb. Here's an example of complementary shading using reds and, uh, and blues as a base. So this dragon right here, his head is red. So what color would we use to shade with a complement? Well, you look on the opposite side of the color wheel, that would be green. So any areas in here, these little nooks and crannies that are red, that you get like this really cool neutralized shadow tone, that's green being drawn over the top of it. Let's look over here. This is kind of an unfinished dinosaur dragon, dragon looking creature uh, that is mainly blue. So what color would I use to make the shadows? Orange. I would use orange. And you can kind of see the beginning of some shadows over here. They neutralize each other and make natural shadow tones. Now when you mix other colors together, it does what colors naturally do. If you mix a blue with a red, you'll start to get purple mixed out of it. If you mix a yellow and a green, you'll get yellowish green. Uh, so you're always mixing other colors together, but when you mix those complements, they neutralize each other. So what I'm going to show you now is an example of how much color to use. Yes, you need to focus on how much color you use because not all the colors are equal in strength. Understanding this right here has been the deciding factor on success or failure on several students' assignments. They may have understood how to use complementary shading, but they didn't achieve the effect because they used too much of a certain color. So right here, this is your general rule of thumb. Red and green are pretty much equal in intensity. Neither of them outweighs the other. When we go down to orange and blue, however, uh, the gap between the two is a lot further. Blue is very heavy. Blue is very intense compared to orange. But when we go down here to purple and yellow, there is a huge gap. Purple is one of the boldest colors on the color wheel, and yellow is the lightest, which means if you're wanting to have a good balance between the colors, you need to use a heck of a lot more yellow than purple. So let's take a look at this picture right here. This is uh, just a rose, just chilling out in nature, doing what it does best. If we were to look at this and try to pick out the major colors for it, 
Well, I see about four. I see the red petal of the rose. I see the next obvious, which is the green of all the stems and the leaves. And then we got other little uh, smaller ones. We've got purple down where the rose petal becomes a little darker. And then yellow, these little vein areas inside the leaf. So how would we know how to shade these different parts? You wouldn't use the color green to shade everything in this rose. You would use green only in the red areas. And in the areas that are purple, you would use yellow to shade. Likewise, in the green areas, you would use red to shade the leaves and the stem. But if you look close, there's no defined line where the red becomes purple. It gradually fades into it. So you need to be mindful of that as well. That comes through layering. Uh, you need to know, going back to your value lesson on what a hard edge and a soft edge are and when to use them and why. So in quick review, complementary colors are colors that exist opposite of their neighbor on the color wheel on the other side of it. For example, red and green. When you mix complements together, they neutralize each other. And to neutralize means that they lose all of their original colors. They become this brownish, grayish, pukey kind of a color. And that's the secret to creating realistic shadows in your work. Some colors are more intense than others. You need to know that before you mix the colors together. You would need a heck of a lot more yellow than you would purple to get a good shadow. And finally, this is one of those things you really need to master because we're going to use it on every future assignment in this class that involves specifically use of color. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Rewatch the video if none of this stuck. Come back for reference, and I look forward to seeing you. Bye.